Hey, everybody. So as someone who spends a majority of their days researching AI, kind of deep in the weeds, doing a lot of coding, things like that, the most jarring parts of my day still tend to be when I'm dealing with like uh, executives and business owners and talking to them about their AI needs, just being flat out honest with it. It's jarring to me because it's um, like two different fields and then having even I deal a lot more recently with executives in this camp that um, are on the right track. They understand a lot of the dynamics of AI, understand exactly how it works, et cetera. Like I have I tend to have a lot more good conversations with business owners and executives in like the last like six months than I have before. Uh, so I would commend everyone overall for that. Uh, what tends to be jarring about it still, though, is that we have these really good conversations and then they want to immediately just look towards like, a, how do I throw it in an app? How do I throw it to open AI? Like, how do I like uh, essentially like make this work um, and, and <laughs> via like patchwork software? Right. And then so it's to me, I, I don't get it because it's they do like. 99% of the work and then they they like miss the last component. Um and then so to me like the the last component like very simplistically like to me it's all about this. As an engineer the beauty overall like why you should be doing this like 1 million percent is this, right? And then so um it, the uh, I have wanted like a, as like a like like CIO, someone who has been in those types of roles for for over a decade, I have wanted this hub and spoke approach to be the norm for forever. Like this is the ideal to me. Point to point is not the ideal to me. It's very far from ideal. When you're dealing with a point to point infrastructure as an organization, it's very like um, it's tedious, right? Uh, and it's hard if you remove D with a different software, you have to replace connections to H, G, E, and C uh, in this particular instance. And then those connections also impact F, F in this particular instance quite significantly and A. Uh, and then so you have to look at that entire map, right? Whereas with just a hub and spoke approach, if I replace D, I replace D. I swap it out with C or I swap it out with, with G or F or Z or whatever I want it to be, right? Um, and it's a much better overall approach than um, this point-to-point -point approach is, is, is part one of this. Part two of this is I, like uh, companies still aren't understanding exactly where AI is like replacing these things. AI is a replacement, in in my opinion, for the software overall within this spoke. Right? It's a, like AI is um, can be your hub in this instance, but then it also replaces some of the spokes. Um, and then I think that's where a lot of people get hung up within this, right? And then so uh, to me, I've built this out. So this is like an AI based legal framework specifically for law firms and lawyers. Okay. And so I built this out as an application. And, and the idea and my logic behind this is, is that this um, particular Python code that we're looking at here for your average law firm could flat out save you, um, let's say thousands of dollars per month. Uh, and hundreds of thousands of dollars, if not like up to seven figures per year, right? Flat out. That 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 is the flat out assumption within this. Just the simple Python code notebook that we're looking at here. And then, so what do I do within this Python code notebook that we're looking at here? The first thing is it's an AI powered legal document analyzer. It it uh, has contract summarization and risk assessment capabilities, case law retrieval and precedent matching predictive analytics for case outcomes, and it can integrate with uh, legal databases. And then all of that and all of what I just described here is all within this code that we're looking at here, right? And then so the output that we get when we run this code is document analysis, contract summary, contract risk analysis. Uh, we look, here's research for similar cases for a query. So if the query is a client is suing a vendor for failing to deliver goods on time, claiming breach of contract and seeking damages. This would, in this instance, pull up Smith v. Jones from 2018, in which the plaintiff won. Uh, and then uh, it can it does predictive analysis based off of that and can update the research and search your database overall. So 
the bottom line is that this is doing a lot, right? It's grounding uh, all of your search queries and, and uh, making your database overall AI powered, uh, etc. <laughs> and, and so what this does in overall code terms is not very complex, right? We're talking like 500 lines of code here total. But this is replacing five of your uh, of your apps of your of your uh, five things that you're paying for within your organization currently. Uh, and then you get it here, right? Um, and then within that, what's missing within this particular framework here that we're looking at here is the hub, the brain, right? And then so the in this instance, and currently a lot of corporations, entities, etc., you look at the LLM model um, as the brain and the hub within this. And if you want the LLM model to be the hub and the brain within this particular equation, that's fine, right? But what I want you to uh, understand and wrap your brain around is is that that hub itself should be plug and play as well, right? And you should be building out the the framework within that. What's more important is is this, right? The, this outer shell and what we're building out that goes into the hub, and then from here I just plug in the hub, and the hub is going to be optimized based off of these things. Again, if you want it to be an LLM model, we can put it in here. And I can guarantee, like, with an LLM model, this is gonna, this framework would perform okay, um, and then you would get by, uh, and there's certain things that you can do, but I could optimize this framework even better for you, for example. I could utilize other types of AI technology that would be better for the hub in this instance than an LLM model. You would have a full control over it, full ownership, and it would actually be cheaper for you overall in the long run, right? Instead of pinging and, and paying uh, an unknown API fee, key of fees every single time that you're running this model and paying those fees to say OpenAI, you would control them and you would control all of that within your environment, right? And then what you're building out in this instance then is a uh, software backend that becomes more and more valuable over time. <laughs> like that's the big takeaway from this. And I don't think that like corporations understand, right? So with this point to point with this particular infrastructure here, there it is impossible to not build up tech debt within this system, right? It's just how the system is designed. Whereas if you move over to this more approach, you're eliminating tech debt and reducing tech debt um, within this particular environment. You can do plug and play, you can plug and play the hub and then plug and play the different spokes. This can be uh, optimized and built out for 10 users, which is then the same process for 100 users, which is then the same process for 1000 users. Much more scalable overall, much more efficient, far cheaper. Uh, and then all of it is just being driven essentially by uh, an AI in the middle, right? And then again, don't get hung up by the AI in the middle or what exactly that is like the AI model is in the middle that can grow that can adjust that can be anything what is much more valuable within this is the framework right the reason why there's so many companies that are uh, popping up within these industries and all of a sudden can do all of the bells and whistles that you want them to do and they're charging you is because they're all building on top of all of this right they're just doing the the um, one extra step and assuming that you're going to be so lazy in the end that you're never going to figure any of this out and then to me that's just a, a uh, recipe for disaster right i would rather be five years ahead and, and f uh, rather than like two years ahead, which is their approach. And then so within, um, I think it's going to take you overall about two years for the, the average person to realize that this is the way that it is. But then after that, I think that that, that entire market falls off a cliff, right? So I'd rather be upfront ahead of the game telling you exactly this is how it is um, and this is what is available to you rather than try to hold that back. I, that's another thing that I notice and, and I have a lot of conversations with recently with business owners with their like third party tech teams, et cetera, is that like they see they feel that um, their tech teams are, are um, holding back when it comes to this information. And I would absolutely say that that's uh, that's the absolute truth. Right. If what you're looking at here, if, if this code is, is um, surprising to you in any way, if someone has told you that these types of things aren't possible within the status quo, they're flat out lying to you. Right. Um, and then the second thing that, that I would assume that they would say is that like, well, like if it, it's um, if you put in an LLM model in here, then you're going to have like decreased accuracy within some of these things. And it's not going to function 100% exactly how you would want it to in those instances. And you wouldn't have complete control over it, which would be 1 million percent true, right? 
which is why there's things around that. And there's uh, several ways to deal with that particular problem. Um, swarm algorithms, genetic algorithms, building your own LLM model, using a small LLM model, using a large LLM model, <laughs> however you want to deal with that particular problem in your particular instance, that's a uh, personalization problem as opposed to just poo-poo the entire architecture and keep paying like uh, overpaying for your, your software that is doing the same thing just because you are running into that one particular problem, right? Um, it's uh, searching for problems rather than searching for solutions in that instance. And that's where a lot of people are, are at um, within this game, honestly, just um, pointing that out overall. But so as you can see here, uh, here's the framework, right? So document analysis, contract summary, contract risk assessment. If you hired me to to build this out for you, this is exactly what I would build it out. I would put, I, I would, uh, if you hired me, I, I could put it um, a, a more friendly, user-friendly UI on front of this so you wouldn't actually be looking at code. But this is all I would be doing the yeah, <laughs> like anything that I would be doing on top of this would just be making this look prettier for you and for your users overall. Uh, and that's the bottom line. And that's very cheap to do from here. Uh, I, I can do that for you in, in uh, an hour from here if that's what you want. <laughs> if anyone wants to like that directly, feel free to reach out, right? But so just pointing this out, like, and, and the big disconnect, like, the, like it literally bothers me having conversations with like executives and CEOs. And then they're like, yes, I, I like everything that you're putting down now. Like go, go figure out like um, what apps to do with this and, and like how to piece that together. And then it's like, well, like when you do that, like you put together like your open AI fees, uh, you're like um, paying, I don't know, like complexity and then this other company and then this other company like uh, on the back end and like to, to like code it out and to build it out. And then you're dealing with like maybe some AI code in there, except like you're introducing a lot more complexity to the equation, a lot more cost, et cetera, than you really need to. It all comes down to this, right? Which is like uh, this hub and spoke model has been like, I've been talking about this for 20 years. Like this has been my goal and my vision for 20 years. And, and here we are, right? Uh, and it's, um, I'm not alone within that. It, 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 so you, like you um, pay any sort of the big management consulting firms, this is uh, this is what they've been talking about and building Brendan better off of for 20 years, right? It's just that the reality is now here. Um, and then since the reality is here and it has come so quickly, it's, I think, catching a lot of people off guard that you can actually do these things and actually get your hub and spoke approach uh, if you actually follow through within it, right? It's um, your data and putting in the work for your organization overall is is the bottom line and it's cheaper than you think uh, and the sooner that you start the more advantages that you see it's like the exact opposite of the traditional software industry within this approach and i can't state that overall enough uh, if you like this type of content please like and subscribe i'll leave a link to this ai based legal framework software for law firms and lawyers Feel free to use it, especially if you're a law firm or, or a lawyer. Here you go. Uh, it's everything that you would want, right? In one package, free, MIT license, do whatever you want with it. Uh, thank you very much.